Traveling is something I really like to do, but figuring out what to bring is often a bit of a struggle, since I really want to come home with some great photos and some great video footage. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what I've got in my travel backpack. So I actually don't have any trips planned right now, but I've just been on a ski trip about a month ago. So I'm just gonna show you what gear I would bring if I was going on a trip again. And yeah, I like to keep it rather light. The backpack I'm using is a Low Pro Flipside BP400AW3. It's rather small, which is something I really appreciate since I really don't like having a massive backpack on. Both because that's heavy, but also because of the massive footprint on your back. The backpack has one big room when you open it up from the layer with the strap hanging over it. It's quite easy to open since it's just a zipper in both sides. Within this room you have a lot of flexibility to set it up the way you want to. Because all the room separators connect with Velcro. I don't have a specific way of setting it up. I kinda just mix and match all the time depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going. So I can't recommend a specific layout. I will however say that as much as possible I would leave the lower right side for something you need to grab fast. Since down in this corner you have a zipper on the outside of the backpack so you'll easily be able to grab for example your camera with your left hand. So as you might be able to guess I always leave one of my cameras in that position. On the front of the backpack there's also a room where you'll be able to store some stuff. In here I usually just leave a cloth, a pair of leather photo gloves from Bella Red, a power bank from Anka and some other small accessories. I've got two laptops I usually switch between depending on what I'm doing on the trip. If it's vacation then I'm usually bringing my 15 inch M2 MacBook Air in midnight color. It's super thin, lightweight and have great battery life. Performance wise ain't it the best. So that's why whenever I'm going on a business trip I'll usually then just take my 16.8 inch Lenovo laptop with me. Since it does a way better job within editing softwares since it has way more performance. The battery life however isn't as great especially when using it for some high demanding tasks such as editing. So that's why I'm going with my MacBook for when I just need to answer some mails and write some scripts and well minor stuff and my Lenovo laptop for a little more performance demanding tasks. In the laptop space, I actually really think that MacBooks have been going the right way these last few years, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong, I like my Lenovo laptop. It just isn't as sleek and minimal and ain't built in the same great materials. It feels a lot more plasticky, so whenever possible, I'll try to go with my M2 MacBook Air. I do miss the numpad and face detection whenever I'm using my MacBook Air, but that's a minor detail. And well, I do have Touch ID, which works fine. Sometimes I also have my iPad Pro from 2020 with me, but I usually never actually use it. So I should just start leaving it at home. As I've mentioned in my last everyday carry video, the phone I'm using is an iPhone 14 Pro Max. However, I've upgraded it a bit lately. It's one of those things that I've got with me everywhere, so I think it deserves a spot in this video as well. Since my last EDC video, the company Moft has reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out some of their products. So they've sent me a new case and some MagSafe tripod stands. I've had the products for about two weeks by now and they're absolutely amazing. I especially love the tripod stand, it's so handy. I however probably don't use it the way it was intended to be used because I actually don't really use it that often in the fully folded out version. I either just pull it down from the top or I flip out the small little magnetic mechanism. It's quite sturdy, so you shouldn't worry about your phone falling back over in any of the positions, except if you place it stupidly yourself. Because of the MagSafe functionality, it just sits permanently on my phone now, and I only take it off whenever I need to charge my phone with either a power bank or on my charger at my table. So it's quite amazing. Thanks to Moft for sending me some of their items, I really appreciate it. And I'll probably also be using their magnetic tripod stand for many years to come. If you're interested in any of these products, then you can check out the links in the description. The headphones I use most of the time is the Skullcandy Crusher ANC2. They've got a great and powerful bass, 
which is something I really prefer whenever I'm watching movies, which is something I really like to do whenever I'm traveling. In the case that comes with the headphones, there's also an auxiliary cable. This is something I often use on my camera to make sure that my audio doesn't clip if I'm recording people. So there's more than one purpose for the headphones. But to be honest, I mostly just use them for listening to movies or music. Listening to music can become quite hard for your ears if you have the crusher bass at 80% or above. So if I know that I want to listen to music for a long time, I usually put the crusher bass to about 50%. The headphones are packed with features that can be tuned in Skullcandy's Skull IQ app. Here you can tweak EQ, multi-point connect and etc. It's also quite nice that they've got multi-point connect so that you can be connected to two devices at the same time. I usually really like to have both my phone and my iPad or laptop connected at the same time. This makes it super easy to take a call while you're watching a movie. Amazing pair of headphones, highly recommended. I've got two cameras and I'll usually have both with me on any kind of trips. I got a Sony a7 IV and a Sony FX3. Both are great at different things. I mostly use my FX3 for recording since it's a cinema camera, so it's designed for video. The a7 IV is what I mainly use whenever I'm taking photos of any kind since it has 33 megapixels where my FX3 only has 12 megapixels. So I get a much sharper image with the a7 IV. It also has an 8K oversampling, so there's lots of pixels to work with in post. So I try as much as possible to use this camera for photos and the FX3 for video, even though both the cameras can do both photo and video. Attached to my Sony a7 IV, I've got a vertical grip. This makes it easier for me to shoot photos that's supposed to be put on social media. But one of the other reasons is also that it gives me double the battery life since you can fit two batteries in the grip instead of just a single one. So it's quite handy for photo shoots or if you're out walking all day and shoot a lot of photos. Plus it's super comfortable. So that's also a nice bonus. In almost all the corners, I've got some strings with a ball at the end. These are for my PGY tech shoulder strap, which I've got on all the time. It's a nice way of carrying your camera around when you don't have it in your backpack. And the strap itself is easily detachable. The lenses I take with me is usually only my 70 to 200 mm f2.8 and my 16 to 28 mm f2.8, both from Sigma. They cover most of what I want to shoot, though it might seem stupid to take a massive lens like my 70 to 200 mm f2.8 with me on a trip. It's actually super nice since you're able to see the world from a completely different perspective, simply because you can zoom in on places you normally wouldn't be able to capture. The 16 to 28 is great for landscapes and also capturing video footage of myself. So that's why it lives either on my FX3 or in my backpack 95% of the time. It delivers great image quality together with amazing versatility. And I love that it's internal zooming, so I'm never worried about dust or anything else getting inside it anywhere, which is amazing. Whenever I'm filming outside, then I need an ND filter to get the most natural looking motion blur. Here my trusted choice is this True Color ND filter from Nisi. There's virtually no color shifting in the filter, so it makes filming outside way easier and way more enjoyable. So it's quite nice. I would however love to try either Polar Pro Maglog or Freewell's magnetic system one day though. Those ND filters seem really smart feature wise, so I might have to pick one of them up someday. But these options do have some color shifting, so there might be a bit fixing in post, which is something this one from Nisi does quite well. So it's definitely one of the best on the market. And if Nisi ever made this version into a magnetic version, I'd buy it instantly. Because the less time you should use to fix something in post, the better, at least in my opinion. It's important to always have a clean sensor and a clean lens. So I always pack a size cleaning kit where there's wipes, a small dust blower and some other cleaning equipment in. Because there's nothing worse than coming home just to find out that all your footage is ruined just because you didn't clean your lens or your sensor on your camera. I usually have both my Sony camera battery chargers with me so that I'm able to charge the batteries at the hotel. I also bring a dual charger brick from Apple since it makes it way easier to charge more than one device at a time. And then if I've got my Lenovo laptop with me, I need that humongous charger. It's so unhandy in all aspects. I try to have at least one more USB-C charger with me since I've got a lot of gear that needs charging through USB-C at the same time. So it's always nice to have an extra one. 
A tripod is quite handy, but it's also large. So most of the time, I really try to think about what I'm gonna do on the trip so I can find out if a tripod is needed. The tripod I've got here is the Benro Cyanbird in carbon fiber. It's a hybrid tripod, so it's great for both photo and video. It also only weighs about a single kilogram, so it's super light and way more easy to have with you around, which most options aren't. I also have a DJI RS3 gimbal that I like to bring with me sometimes, but it's often quite hard to fit in my backpack. But most of the time, I kind of just end up bringing it anyway. And well, it actually is quite good at getting some steady footage for you. So often I'm pretty happy that I took it with me. With me, I also have my drone, which is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. But I'm usually not using it that often. But it's nice to have available in case you need it. In the backpack, I also have a lot of Arca Swiss base plates available in case I need it. Then I've got some shotgun microphones, a Rode NTG4, I think it's called, and a Sony ECM B1M, which can be connected through the hot shoe mount. I've also got some DJI mics, just in case. Then I've got some step up rings for my camera filters, and I often also have a pair of earbuds with me, just in case. But this is pretty much also just all I bring with me whenever I'm traveling. If you're looking for any of the products I've shown in this video, please check them out through the link in the description. I'd really appreciate that. Apart from that, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this video to let me know that you actually liked the video. You can also subscribe if you want to know more about tech, photo, video, and software. Other than that, then I'm out.